What's up, tribe? Welcome to the Journey to Pay Speaking Gigs podcast, and I'm your host, Charles Clark, and today I have Minda Hartz. Minda, welcome to the show. Hey, Charles. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. I'm so excited to get this thing going. I took a little break from the podcast world to really get in this virtual world of, of motivational speaking and, and now a little bit more in person, so uh, I'm excited to, to speak one speaker to another. Before we get started, let the Thrive Tribe know a little bit about who you are as a person. Uh, so who is Minda? Great question, Charles. Uh, I definitely think Minda myself, I am evolving uh, into a better version of myself each and every day intentionally, but yeah. I am a speaker. I am a daughter. I'm a sister, uh, a friend. I am a catalyst for equity for women of color in the workplace um, and I used to think that I didn't have a voice, Charles, and then I realized, you know what, we all have a voice. We just have to decide how we want to use it. And I use it for um, bringing and showing light on the inequalities that women of color face in the workplace. Mm, that's that's rich right there. I want to I want to take a step back on what you just said. You didn't think you had a voice. Take me to that moment, because I feel like a lot of people who are starting out speaking, they're at that place where you mentioned, where I don't feel like I, my voice matters. What what was going through your mind at the time? What was the, the mental block that you were dealing with that, that made you believe that? Yeah, so many things, but uh, the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves are just as important as the stories that anybody else might tell about us. And so I realized that I was telling myself this narrative that, you know, you're not like so-and-so or you're too shy or, you know, you're introverted, so you can't possibly be, you know, a public speaker, you're, you know, that you're afraid of it. And what I realized was um, we all have a voice and we all have to just decide how we want to use it. And I realized that I was going through a really painful time in my career as the only one, as the only black woman in the workplace at the place I was working at. And I realized that, you know, if I don't say something, if I don't use my words, if I don't advocate for myself and for others, then I just leave the workplace worse than I found it, right? And if I want to make it better than I found it, then I have to figure out how I can use my voice in an authentic way to me. And it really had nothing to do with eventually being a paid public speaker, but I had to be that speaker inside my workplace, right? So how was I going to do that? And it just drove me crazy that I have these feelings and thoughts and I wasn't using them, using my gifts. And so that was when I realized, okay, you do have a voice, but you have to change the narrative. You have the ability to do that. Yeah, the thing that I, I I gathered from that is you have to speak up for yourself before you can speak up on a stage. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, th I think sometimes we get it backwards. Like, yeah, I want to I want to speak on a stage, but wait a minute, you're not even speaking up for yourself in the in the situations that you need to. Like, we don't we don't that speak, part. Yeah. <laughs> we don't speak <laughs> life to ourselves, and we expect to to breathe life in other people when when we fail to do it ourselves. Um, and and there is a higher degree of accountability that must be held for speakers, um, especially when we're, we're talking about impacting people's lives and allowing them to um, leave better than they came from an experience that you provided. So like, tell, tell me about your story. So when did, how did you get into speaking to Amazon, Google, Twitter, <laughs> Capital One, Nike, uh, Girl Scout, all of these amazing organizations? And, and when did you realize that what you had to say, it mattered about leadership and inclusion? Oh, gosh. Charles, can I be honest with you? Like if you would have asked me even three years ago, five years ago, would you be speaking on stages like, you know, those? And yeah. I would have been like, me? Ne no, you know, because again, I didn't think that I was the one. I didn't think that I had, you know, sometimes we like to compare ourselves, right? I'm not mm -hmm. Brene Brown, right? But I had yeah. to realize, okay, yes, but you are Minda Hearts and what you bring is unique to the situation. And as I mentioned earlier, I was going through this really traumatic time in the workplace, dealing with a lot of racial trauma um, in the places I was working at. And I started just with creating a newsletter. I put out a newsletter back in 2015, uh, every Monday, and I started to tell my story because I figured if I was experiencing this in the workplace, maybe there were other black and brown women that were as well. So yeah. before I even did a paid speaking event, I thought, okay, there's things that we deal with at uniquely uh, as black and blonde women in the workplace. How can I get this word out? How can I let people know that your careers matter even if people don't see you, right? You belong in every room that you enter, but maybe this room is not for you, yeah. right? So being yeah. able to make those 
pivots and it really started with the newsletter then from there uh very consistent every monday putting that out with my talking points right that was yep. my talking point um and then from there people started to resonate with that and it took years to build that mailing list to find my voice to see what resonate what part of the story people you know um could marinate on and those were my early days of speaking right uh on mm -hmm. the newsletter and then from there i created my podcast and then more came out and then books and then i had this opportunity to put myself out there but i never started with the intent that i was going to be this top speaker out in the on the circuit i just started because i knew i had a pain point and i was hoping that if i shared my story maybe someone else would hurt less wow wow i i think that that's a lot of richness in, in what you just said because a lot of times we think we have to to take the 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 million step right in order to be successful like i'm just going to take that big leap and then boom magic happens but sometimes it's like that small little that small little step that today step that right now step that you take that leads to these bigger moments in our life and i can't concur with that like for me when I, when I first got into speaking, it was like, hey, let me start a nonprofit <laughs> and let me help students understand the importance of education because I don't want them to go through what I went through when I was sitting out a semester in college before going to college, watching my friends going to college without me. Uh, and then I just wanted them to understand that they can make it out, right? And so that was my step. And then that step led to organizations reaching out to me saying, hey, we saw that you, you know, you're doing some amazing things with this nonprofit world. Why don't you come into our organization and deliver some of the, the content that you have to offer? And I'm like, wait a minute, like you can get paid to do this right here. <laughs> like send me your invoice. That's what they told me. And I was like, invoice, like, what is that? Like, <laughs> and, and, yeah. and that, that was the journey for me. And, you know, so I, I definitely relate to that, to that thing of just understanding, like, you don't have to, to set this this big milestone right now to like say, I want to be the absolute best or I want to speak to these organizations. Sometimes it just takes that little step. What's that little step that you want to take tribe? I, I want to, I want to ask you, Minda, like for you, you know, we talk about our, our biggest challenges. I know one of the things that you mentioned was, all right, I, I, I didn't think my voice mattered. What was the biggest challenge that you had on the journey? Actually, like, you know, when it comes to the business side of things, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome in order to become that paid speaker? Great question. And I'm so glad you have this podcast, Charles, because I think, you know, when we're early in the game, we don't we don't know what we don't know. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, how first of all, I didn't know I should be getting paid to speak in my early days. Right. I didn't know that was an option. Um, I just thought, oh, I was doing this, you know, out of the goodness of my heart because I wanted to make sure that more people got, you know, the information that they needed to be successful, not just survive, but thrive. Right. Yeah, and yeah. so um, and then I realized, wait a a second this is actual this is a business right when you have certain um organizations and companies coming to you and you're like wait a second okay i'm now putting together a deck i'm now asking to you know people are asking me to do keynotes i they're now they're asking me what my price is i don't know what that is you know so i had to um really start to double down and say part of my business is public speaking and if i want to grow that business then there's going to be some things that I need to shift. I do need to have a price, right? I do need to have talking points. I can't talk about everything, right? Yeah. There are certain things that I'm really good at. And so realizing that this is what I bring to the table and owning that. And I think sometimes we see a lot of speakers who will say, oh, I can talk about everything. We could probably talk about everything, but are we good at talking about everything, right? Do, as yeah. you said, do we inspire every audience with everything that we say? No, there are certain things about our story and thing. And so I just doubled down on what are those three to four things that I love to talk about that I'm good at right. and really just building from there. And I think those were some of the things that took time uh, yeah. for me to get to. And, and yeah. Yeah. Two, two things I, I live by. Like one is when you can describe what you do as a uh, process, that's when you have a business, right? So when you can do, when you can describe what you do as a process, that's when you have a real business. And a lot of times, like we stay in that mode of, just running something and never having something that actually can produce longevity and change for our lives. So that was, that was, that was really big. That was really big for me in, in understanding that. And the other thing like you were mentioning, like we don't have to like be the jack of all trades when it comes to speaking, right? Like I look at Chipotle, Chipotle. I don't know if you like Chipotle, but 
<laughs> up some sometimes list, right yeah I, I don't go every week but i i remember one one time i was looking back at my um my um my tax statements and all of that and i was like how often did i go out to eat in like what restaurants were like my number one? And I I looked at Chipotle and it, it Chipotle ranked up by like nine nine hundred dollars. I ain't gonna lie about that. So, <laughs> but anyway, I was like, so one 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 thing that sticks out about Chipotle versus all the other companies out there is like they specialize in Mexican food, right? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna come there and you're going to you know what you want. Like you want rice beans. Uh, chicken, you know, you want the guac, all of those things. They specialize in that one thing. Now, the one thing that you're not going to see with Chipotle is they're not going to offer fries, right? right. And <laughs> and we think that like when we become speakers, we need to offer the fries, we need to offer the the Mexican dish, we need to offer pizza. But no, like, <laughs> what's the thing that you are are gifted in and focus in and hone in on that? Like that's what I'm looking for when I'm working with people, especially. People who are more talented than me in certain things, like running ads, right? I don't want somebody who's who's gifted in Facebook ads running my my Google ads, right? So don't be afraid to niche down and and know who you serve and specialize in that one thing. I, I love that, Charles. And I remember hearing Ava, Ava DuVernay once say, "There's riches in the niches," and yeah. there really, really is. Uh, and you know now because I was very intentional about what my lane is that I don't do all of these, you know, I don't need to juggle it all. I don't have to be like everything you need to be because I was positioned to talk about these certain things that contribute to equity for women of color in the workplace. And so I'm very clear about that. And I say yes to those things that align with what my speaking brand is. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's where that longevity comes from because you don't want to convolute or dilute your message because you're trying to do everything. Right. Like what, what breaks your heart? You know, like the things that break your heart are the things that will, that will create a tribe. And like, for me, like I'll, I'll go back to, to the time where I first started speaking, I was hiding everything that made, that made me truly who I was, truly who I am. And I, and I felt like I could just throw this little cover up on it. Like, Hey, be motivating, like be empowering. You can do it without being vulnerable and, and sharing my truth. The things that that break your heart are the things that's going to create a trial for you. So don't don't be afraid to share that thing that that is your most vulnerable place, right? Because that's going to build the connection between those people that are sitting in those seats, and they want you to be real. They want you to say something that they can feel, right? Absolutely. So so tell me, like for you, like twenty looking into twenty twenty two, what does it look like for your career in in the speaking world? Yeah, you know, I, I love what you said about just the vulnerability. And I think that that's something that I've <clears throat> had to really own, that there are moments where things that I say, I get choked up, right? There's yeah. certain things that, um, stories that I haven't shared yet that I know would really set someone free. And, you know, for me, it's really doubling down on courage uh, because I still, even as a public speaker, I am very much an introvert. Right. And realizing that um, it's OK to be vulnerable. Um, and when I use my voice, I also not only set myself free, but I set other I help other people heal as well. Right. I yeah. get the ability. I have the power to be the medicine that someone else might need. And so I'm really when I think about my speaking for 2022, I think about how can I be the medicine in the rooms that I'm in. Right. Mm -hmm. That I it's a privilege be able to share. It's a privilege that someone books you and really making sure that, like you said, when people engage with me, it's a transformation and really thinking and, and honing on my skills, right? Like right. realizing, okay, I have a speaking coach. What do I need to be working on so that I can produce that medicine that people need, right? And I think that sometimes people think they get to a certain place in their career that they don't have to invest in themselves. No. And so for me to have that longevity of speaking yeah. Is something that I'm spending more time on honing in on certain skills. Yeah, and I, I think like that's a that's a every quarter thing, right? I mean, daily, of course, yeah. but every quarter, what is that thing that I'm looking to improve in in my business? Like, of course, we got to be great speakers. That's something that we work on daily. But what are all the other little things like? And that's why I always have a coach on me. You know, like I don't I don't want to be out there going out there delivering a message that only I heard. I want, I want, I want to filter those things through my coach, right? And and me doing that, I walk away with more value from that experience because sometimes my coach has to extract certain things out of me that maybe I comprehended, 
but my audience wouldn't receive well because it wasn't fleshed out. Uh, so I think I think that's that's spot on when it comes to working with a coach and and having that accountability to to do better. Absolutely, absolutely. And and I think with your coach, you also think about what are those other offerings that you can work with. You know, uh, one thing that I released this year was because I um, am an author. I also put out a course for how do you put out your how do you put out a book, right? Whether you go yeah. the traditional route or or uh, self publishing. And again as speakers, we have the opportunity to really un unpull the hood or pull the hood, you know, up so people can see and feel things. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's part of it, like, not just leaving people with like, sitting with their thoughts, but also giving them some tools to continue on and tell their story, so that we're not the only ones out there telling stories as well. Yeah, yeah, that's a tribe thing right there. Like, I, I want the people in that's around me, I want them to eat too. You know, I, I never want to be the one at the table that's that, that's the only one that's that's surviving and, and thriving, right? I, I want everybody around me to enjoy the, the fruits of the prosperity that's in my life, and and that that takes a, a different mindset. I think sometimes people can become too protective of thinking that there's a limited amount of of resources available. But you know, you look at the speaking industry; it's a point one point nine billion dollar industry, speaking industry. And there's room at the table, right? There's room at the table because a lot of a lot of older speakers they're fading out, and a lot of newer speakers is room for opportunity for you to to have the, the fruit of what's available for us, guys. So so what is, there's always room at the table, and I'm I'm not afraid to let one of my my colleagues in the speaking industry know if I'm not qualified for a speaking engagement, yo, this might be a good opportunity for you, you know. So yeah, that's, that's a that's a different mindset, like. What, but what makes that mindset happen, though? What, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think you have to be intentional about it. And I think you have to take ego out of it, right? And say, okay, well, um, I may be getting these opportunities, but I also know some other people who are dynamic speakers yeah. who they need the access to the opportunity as well. So one of the things that I do is I have a running list of speakers that I keep uh, in a um, a document so that when I even when I can't do something or I don't think it's for me, then, you know, my coordinator, I'll say, OK, send these list of names to these to the speakers and, you know, let them at least if they don't work with them, but at least it puts them on the radar. Right. And I realized like that I don't have to be the only one eating. There's plenty of room out here. And that's why I think it's important. Again, we can't speak. I mean, you could speak to everything, but you're not you're not most effective when you are. And so I know what other, my lane is. I know what lane I, I do really well in. I run my own race and, and I know that there are other races and other, you know, um, activists and other, uh, you know, I think of us as, you know, athletes as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Other athletes and, and I like to, to share that baton. And I think that's what makes it more rich um, right. because then people look at, then they come to you and ask you because they trust you that you're giving them also other great speakers. So again, like you said, there's room enough for all of us to eat. Yeah. And, and that's a legacy right there. Like, well, of course we can speak on the stage and make a lot of money doing this, but it's about those little contacts. You know, Let's, I thought of that person. That, that was a mm -hmm. legacy moment. So I'm always trying to look for those. Like, how can I create a legacy today? And it's something that challenge, it challenges you daily when you think about it. Like, what am I truly doing? And does it really build my legacy today? I want you to talk about one of your most memorable experience speaking. And where were you and what happened? Mm, that's a great question. You know, actually, I would say, I, I think I was speaking um, at a Salesforce conference. It was a couple of years ago. It was a, a women's conference that they had at Salesforce. And I was on the stage doing a fireside chat. And a question, I can't remember the question that they asked me, but this was in San Francisco mm -hmm. and it was right before COVID. And, you know, so it's very social distance and those sorts of things, but it was on that, that cusp of things yeah. shutting down. And um, the moderator asked me this question and Charles, it hit me like I wasn't expecting that. And yeah. I got so choked up and a little emotional. And at first, like I would be the person to try to fight it, but I just let it. Mm -hmm. And before you knew it, other people in the audience were, crying, you know, were tearing up as well. And we had yeah. this collective healing moment when I mm -hmm. allowed myself to be vulnerable and it really transformed the room. And then we were able to jump back into it. Oh. And it was just one of the most beautiful conversations, I think talks and memorable because it was where 
it just needed I just let it flow, right? I wasn't trying to keep up with airs or egos. It, it just yeah. was what it was. And it was yeah. the best experience. And it was healing, not just for, for me, but for the audience. And I think sometimes as speakers, um, you have to be ready for some of those moments that hit you at any given time mm. and go with it because um, that's the part of the of the sauce, right? That yeah. vulnerability that you can't like conjure up. And, and I'm glad that I had that moment with the audience because it's it's transformative when you have that connection yeah that's that's real I, I think to to break the emotional um i guess the feeling inside of you that says don't do that stick to your mm -hmm. script <laughs> and you you know just to say you know what forget it i'm just i just got to be me completely right here that yep. that takes that takes a level of courage you know um but i the experience from that was so gratifying because that was a that that was a moment that you didn't even say you didn't even say anything, but it it built it it bridged a connection between you and the audience. That's powerful. Yep. That's powerful. Yeah, and I was a little nervous during it, and even after, you know how you your self talk is like, I don't know how that you know <laughs> how that panned out. But yeah. then so many people like sent me messages just to say thank you, thank you, and you don't realize what other people need too, right? And right. um, and that's when I've realized just to let. Let the spirit move you on the stage and just, yeah. you know, go with it because whatever's supposed to happen, I, I think is supposed to happen. Transcending the script, you know, I I I gotta do that. Because if it's not, it's just a just a cookie cutter message that I just yep. rehearsed. <laughs> and so like I gotta I gotta be like my grandma. My grandma, she doesn't use any um any type of list of ingredients of ingredients that she has to stick to, but she just she's just flowing in it, but she knows what she's doing in the kitchen. Yep. And when it comes out, it's the best thing. So I'm always trying to think about that when I'm when I'm speaking. How can I still be the person I need to be on that stage in order for people to transform? But also, how can I be led by, by my soul, right? The the being, my the the spirit of who I am. Um, so important that I tap into that. So I know you got a book coming out, uh, October fifth, I believe. Let the Thrive Tribe yes. know a little bit about that. Thank you for asking. Yes, uh, I'm excited. This is my second book, my second baby. It's called Right Within, How to Heal from Racial Trauma in the Workplace, available on pre-order right now. Um, and I t I'm a very much a, a, a rap lyrics kind of girl. Um, I incorporate you know, pop culture into my talks. And uh, Lauren Hill's How You Gonna Win If You Ain't Right Within, it, yeah. it, starts, with, it's, it starts with us. And that was you know, my muse for, for writing the next book. Yeah, love it. I'm, I'm I'm excited for the tribe to get their hands on it. Tribe, you heard it here first. Minda, any final words before we head out? Listen, if you want to be a paid public speaker, you know, there's a difference. I'm just going to break it down to you. You Anybody can be a, a public speaker. You could start that today. But if you want to grow and build your bis business, bet on yourself, uh, double down on yourself and um, own, bring, bring what those unique unique pieces of yourself to that stage. You don't have to be anybody else. We don't need another, you put the name out there. We need you. And so I can't wait for you to continue to grow your business.